I called my job that I worked at that day that I called into, <laughs> and I told them to turn on Fox. And they were like, why? I was like, just turn on Fox and just see what happens. And all of a sudden I get all these Snapchats of, like, the people at my job standing there watching the TV as I was in the ring. It was crazy. So I was like, there's no way. Because they thought, they were like, there's no way that's Cameron. And they were like, that girl's like Cameron. And I was like, oh, it's Cameron, all right. <laughs> It's time for Wrestling for the Culture, where we take a look inside to see what the wrestlers of color have been doing this week. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Wrestling for the Culture. I'm your host, Brian H. Waters. Coming up on today's show, I am joined by Cameron Brene. You may have remember her. She was on SmackDown several months ago, taking on Lacey Evans. So we get into that experience, we talk about her Evolve, and of course we talked about how she felt when she won her first title. So sit back, ladies and gentlemen, here's my interview with Cameron Brene. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so on this episode of Wrestling for the Culture, I am joined by the one and only Miss Cameron Brene. Cameron, how are you doing today? I am doing fantastic, how are you? I'm pretty good. I appreciate you taking the time out your very busy schedule to join me for this interview. Um, you know, wrestler for the culture. We like to celebrate the wrestlers of color. So, you know, we got to put on for our own. You feel me? So, uh, oh, always one hundred percent. Yeah, definitely appreciate you doing this. Um, so, how long have you been wrestling for the people who do not know? So, I've been wrestling. It will be three years in August. And what made you decide that you want to become a wrestler? Like, what was the moment? I would honestly say the moment would be altogether, I think, watching Triple H and Jeff Hardy, because I played video games with my cousin, and then I found out Jeff Hardy was, like, a legit person, because that was, like, the early 2000s when, like, Tekken was a thing, and then we had Pokemon. So I thought this was just, like, another random thing just to do. So I saw a match with Jeff Hardy and Triple H and just fell in love with it since then, started watching the girls, just kind of found out something that I needed to do. So that was, I think, the perfect aspect of what I wanted to fully start going full force and be like, Mom, I'm going to be a wrestler. She was like, what? I was like, yeah, no, no, we don't do that? Okay, awesome, cool. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. You had support right out of the gate. Yeah, so just, it, was, it was really good. So you was playing the video games, and that led you to turn on the product? Yes. So oh. I was playing the video game, and my cousin had all of the SmackDown versus Raw from, like, 2000 and... I would say 2004 to 2008. And I would just go to my grandparents' house with him, and we would just play video games. So with that, we ended up watching it one day. I think it was um, it was a paper, but I think it was Armageddon that we had watched or Elimination Chamber, one of the two. And then Jeff Hardy had a match, and then there was a match with Triple H at the end. And I was like, oh, this is, like, so awesome. This could be something, like, we should do all the time. Then we watched WrestleMania 25 or 26. I'm going to say it was 26. With, like, uh, who was Oh my gosh, what was his name? It was like the theme song was like, I made it. That's the only reason. Like Kevin Rudolph, Rudolph is his name. The mm -hmm. theme song was like, I made it. So that was like the thing that I remember from the first WrestleMania that I watched. And ever since then, I haven't done anything else but like love WrestleMania, like wrestling. That was uh, WrestleMania 27, Atlanta, right? I don't, I, I just remember that it was a WrestleMania and it was brown and like, yellowish oh i'm tripping i'm tripping somebody's going to call me out on it that would have been wrestlemania 26 in arizona edge and jericho and Shawn michaels the undertaker yes <laughs> so okay so you you watched that and then you got hooked now did you go back in the debt like go back in the archives and start watching old stuff especially like having access to the wwe network and youtube so I have my best friend, he does that stuff, and I really wanted to go back and watch the things on uh, YouTube, like the network, and I did a little bit. I went back and researched 
you know, like Shawn Michaels, Triple H, I was a huge Edge fan. So I went back and done all of that stuff. So other than that, I don't really know for a fact that I went back as far as I should have. But I've been trying. I've just been so busy. I've been trying to, like, learn my history before because I didn't start watching wrestling until 2007. Okay. Well, you know, yeah. it's, that's – wow. So now – you decide that you want to be a wrestler. Um, mm-hmm. Who trained you first? So the first person I trained me was Derek Stone. Mm-hmm. So Derek Stone, there was a company in Kansas City that I had worked for, and Derek Stone ended up becoming a trainer there. So I had trained underneath Derek Stone. There's a guy named uh, Daniel Sikorsky that helped train me as well. Um Leo Diaria helped train me, and then uh, there was a couple more people that had their hand in training me, but those would be the main people that I would say started my training. And then lately I've been training with, like, Mike Seidel, Mike Outlaw, Camaro Jackson, things like that in St. Louis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, can you um, can you talk about what, it, you know, as a black women's wrestler – what it means, uh, especially when you you look back at NXT Takeover and you see Bianca Belair coming out with her outfit that she made, and it basically says "I am Black History," um, and you know celebrating Black History Month. What does how does that like motivate you moving forward? It motivates me a lot because it's I don't know if I can really say it's more of embracing like the Black culture, but more of like embracing ourselves. Because I feel like being in a sport that's most dominant to the Caucasians, not to the African Americans, we kind of lose sight on like who we are, what we come from, our background, like that. So having people, like women, who are very empowered and very comfortable in their skin and very educated and talented, like Bianca Belair, me again, like all of those ladies, it it. Makes me it makes me more confident to be like, okay, I'm in this ring, I need to do what I need to do, not to hold myself to a standard of other people, if that makes kind of any sense. Now have you had a chance to pick their brains personally? Um, the only person I got to be able to pick their brains was I had went to SmackDown my first time, um, and Amber Moon was there. And I had talked to her a little bit just about like her career and wrestling with other women and wrestling with men and how she got up in the business. So that was a huge eye opener for me. And it just blew my mind the way she is, like how humble she is, how sweet she is. She had gave me someone else's phone number to get in contact with. Her name was Miss Natural. So I got in contact with her. She helped me a little bit. She gave me some good promotions that she used to work for. Just she gave me a lot of advice, especially when it comes to movesets for women compared to men. She made that a thing for me because I wasn't always thinking about, you know, girls aren't as good a base as men are. Girls aren't as powerful. Not all girls do pump handles. Just a lot of different things to consider with working with men and with men and women. That's awesome. I used to work. Um... I used to work at WSU Wrestling as uh, backstage social media. The first time I worked there was actually her last show before she went to the WWE. And prior to that, I had had an opportunity to interview her at WrestleCon, um, the very first WrestleCon around WrestleMania 29. And so, like, everything you're saying, I, I, I could definitely believe it because – she's just one of the people that's humble that, you know, you, the business needs more people like her here. Oh, for sure. For sure. I've met a couple of people who are very, very humble in this business. And it's like a, it's like a culture shock in a way, which is so weird. Cause like, you know, like they're humans and they're like natural people, but on TV, they're like these huge stars. So when you meet them in person, it's like, you want to fan girl, but you can't because they're just like your coworkers. But you're also like, do you know who you are? <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> you you mind dropping any names? Um, yeah. So I met Tommaso Champa when we worked for Evolve. He kind of helps with all the upcoming people. He's like one of the producers for Evolve. And I was talking to him about my match, and I remember he had um, he had like. We, said, we were talking about something in my mouth because something had went wrong that I did I could have done better. And he, like, touched my leg. And, like, internally, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, Tommaso Chamber just touched my leg. 
But then, like, obviously, like, after, like, that quick switch went off, and I was, like, literally listening to what he was saying. Um, Amber Moon was a person. Lacey Evans was another example. She was beyond, like, amazing towards me, super sweet, super nice, like, helped me out a lot. Um, Adam Cole was another person that he is – Adam Cole, granted, his in-ring persona is amazing. Like, he is overall an amazing wrestler. I feel like he's one of my idols right now. But meeting him, he was in – it was a city next to Troy, Missouri, and he came in for a meet and greet with, like, Nick Aldis and um, Ryback and some other people, and I got to to sit sit down with him. And I've never had word vomit so bad in my life. I have to tell you that story later or something. It was horrible. But sitting down with him, talking to him was just – I could have sat there all day, all night, and talked to him. It was just that comfortable, that – like inviting that he like wanted to talk to us. It was amazing. Yeah, he's one of my favorite people I've met in um business. He just one of those people that, you know, um just like you said, just humble. And you you know, it's great to hear these stories because I you know I've met a lot of these people while they were like at Ring of Honor or or some of the indies, but to see yeah. them at the WWE at NXT and still have those same types of attitudes. Let you know that everybody don't change. Exactly. So, exactly. You, so how was the overall evolve experience? And is that what led you to get the uh, opportunity to be on SmackDown? So, the evolve incident, not incident. That's not the right word. Oh my gosh. It's not an incident. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I said incident, and I was like, no, take that back. Blow that out. <laughs> um, me going to Evolve, I went to a recruitment camp, and they're having another one during WrestleMania. No, during, I think it's the weekend before WrestleMania weekend, so the 27th of March, 25th, something like that. But mm-hmm. I went to Port Ricky, Florida, and it was a three-day camp, so I had met William Regal, Sean Hayes, uh, Tommaso Champa. I met um, Robbie Brookside, Eddie, the ref, um, and I had met um, someone else. I can't remember the name. I'm I'm so sorry I can't remember the name. He was helping with Sean Hayes, the strength and conditioning coach, helping us with push-ups and everything. Um, but we had done, like, child matches for them, and then we put on, like, this uh, – non-profit show for everybody in Port Ritchie, and they kind of just, like, picked, I think it was they said they picked at least one person to get a tryout, so I kind of just went in and just with being myself and just having a fun time, kind of doing whatever, and next thing I knew, I got a message on Facebook, because they had posted, like, great job, everybody, at the recruitment camp, I'm so proud of you, blah, 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 and then at the top, it was like, congrats to Cameron and um, someone else, you've gotten this tryout. And I had just kind of done working out, and I was like, this has to be a dream. Like, this is not happening. I must be sleeping. This is crazy. And I ended up getting that match with Shotzi right before she got signed, which was super crazy because I knew of Shotzi, and I've watched her matches. I never thought I'd be in a ring with her because I knew that she wrestled in, like, Illinois. And ended up getting asked, from Trevin the weekend before he asked if I could make it to Michigan two weeks from that day. And I was like, well, I mean, yeah, I took off work and I was like, I have to go. I can't come in the way I called off. Actually, I'm a bad human. Don't tell people, but I uh, called off work and went to Michigan for the first time and had my match with Shotzi. And it was just an amazing experience. But then for SmackDown, I, Evolve didn't really help with SmackDown. It kind of just was like a freak coincidence, I guess, that I happened to just be on Evolve and then a month or two later ended up being on SmackDown against Lacey Evans. So I just, everything was just coming full circle at one time for me. So I was really, really enjoying that, honestly. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Now, what was it like, you know, what was the nerves like? You get out there, you're on SmackDown. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, your music, you know, know, you in the ring, I should say, and you know, her music hits, like, were you nervous? It wasn't really nerves that were hitting because 
I had talked to her a little bit before because we were in catering, and we, um, when I got picked to do this segment with Lacey, I thought it was really cool. So I was in Gorilla, and Lacey was there, and you talked about how walked past me, and it was right after Kofi Kingston's match, and Kofi walked past, and he was like, hey, good luck. I, I looked at him like, I was so frozen. I was like, thank you, but I was, I probably sounded like a little, like, lost puppy. And, um, was he still champion by then? He was not the champion at the time. Okay. It was a tag match that he had, I think, with the Revival. I'm gonna well, say more than likely <laughs> it was the revival. Yeah, more than likely it was the revival. <laughs> it was him and Big E. Yeah, I remember it was him and Big E that went up before me. And I was like, how do I top this? But uh, <laughs> he, um, so that was supposed to go out with the ref when all the lights were blacked out. And Bakofi comes up, says thank, like good luck. I say thank you. I turn around, the ref's not there. And then the people in Gorilla were like, hey, we're gonna give you your own entrance. And I'm like, what? Like, what are your own entrance? And, like, I'm freaking out at this point. Like, I get my own entrance. What do I do? The music hits. I can't hear it. I'm, like, totally freaking out. And they're, like, go. And I'm, like, what do I go? And I go out and, like, make my turns and get out to the stage. And I did the most indiest, like, hand signal I could have ever saw. And after it, I was, like, so stupid. But I did it. And I walked down the ramp. And the ramp... By the way, if anyone has never walked down the ramp in their life, it is a lot steeper than it looks. So I don't know how people run down and don't fall. It wow. is super steep. It's super steep. Um, so then getting into the ring, it was all fine. It kind of felt like a really big indie show, I feel like, because you can only, like, you can see a lot, but you also can't see too, too much. Okay. And it was kind of just like a soak it in moment. And I love Lacey Evans' theme song. I danced to it. I listened to it in the car on road trips and other shows. So when her music hit, I like wanted to dance, but I was like, don't dance. This is serious. Don't, (laughs) don't do that. It didn't really hit me until she was getting in the ring. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in the same ring as Lacey Evans. This is so cool. Like two years in and I'm in the ring with Lacey Evans. I was so baffled. So, you know, from the match, they did the uh, thing where Lacey left the ring and mm-hmm. you standing there with the ref counting. Is that all you or is like that, you know, they tell you to do that or did you like improv a little bit? So it's more of an outline that they make us do because obviously with us not being signed, we don't know how production and how everything is ran up on the top brand. Mm-hmm. So you have to like, they kind of like spoon fed me a little bit, but as far as, like, my reactions and timing was kind of all me. It's just, it's kind of like, be here, do this, do this. And it's like, okay, cool, I can make that happen. And then going around talking to her, which is really easy, and getting, like, the placement down, like, when we need to, like, where we need to stand, where we're talking. It's like, because you can't, in indie shows, you, like, face the person when you talk, but on TV, you have to, like, open yourself up to, like, the TV screen, but still talk to somebody else. Oh, okay. So that was something I had to kind of get. It's like it's like a theater thing. I remember I did theater in high school, so it's like I still want to talk to you, but I need to open myself up to the crowd, so I'm not kind of like shut off, so like they can see my reactions. So now you know we obviously we're in the day of social media, so you know you post the picture or your family, I should say more likely post the pictures first. Who was the uh, person that surprised you the most when you found out that they had saw the match? Um, I would, uh, cause I, I would say, I told my dad to turn the TV on. Cause my dad, he doesn't watch wrestling, but he will watch it if I'm there. My mom doesn't watch wrestling at all. So mm-hmm. I know my dad was watching it and then he saw me. And then my, they showed my grandparents, but I think outside of my family, I called my job that I worked at that day that I called into, <laughs> and I told them to turn on Fox, and they were like, why? I was like, just turn on Fox and just see what happens, and all of a sudden, I get all these Snapchats of, like, the people at my job standing there watching the TV as I was in the ring. It was 
crazy. Cause I was like, there's no way. Because they thought, they were like, there's no way that's Cameron. And they were like, that girl said Cameron. And I was like, oh, it's Cameron, all right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's on, the... face on national TV. <laughs> and they didn't think you was going to be on TV. No, not at all. <laughs> not um... at all. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. So, um, um, a few more questions before I let you get out of here. I know you got to go train. Um, You're good. <laughs> what, um, when you first won your first title in wrestling, they, so they always say, you know, all right, so you, one thing is true. You'll never hear me use the word F word fake. Um, a few weeks ago for my job, I think this we was, we was trying, when we was trying to schedule this, and I was in um, New Orleans. My friend Amber Rodriguez, one of my best friends in the business, she was wrestling. So I went down there and saw her. And my f- uh, manager, Marin, had went with me to the match because we were down there for work. And I was like, that night, I said, hey, you know, you can come. If you, you want to go? She's like, sure. It's her first wrestling match ever. It was the funniest thing in the world. So, and I oh, kept saying, awesome. you cannot call this fake. So she mm-hmm. said, so she posted an Instagram. I have to send you the post. But so, you know, and I, a lot of times people use that uh, word, but the wrestlers will say there's two moments that are real. That's when you win your first title and when you get in the Hall of Fame. Can you describe what it was like when you won your first championship in wrestling? Um. Yes. So the the company I started for, they – only had two females at the time when I started training. So when I started training, they saw the matches were getting better and we were bringing in more people. So they ended up getting a women's championship belt. And I think this is the time that I had talked to you. The okay. last time I had talked to you the first time, because we had a women's tournament, which was uh, Charlie Cruel and Mickey Knuckles and Ryan Nicole, Tulin Ramsey, me, Sabre Black. It was just a whole bunch of Baby D and uh, Phoebe was out there. And I remember losing that time, but then the next month I won. And it's it's not surreal until I think you hear that three count. Then it's like, oh, I'm really like a champion. Like, this is legit. So I, it was just, it's, it's hard to say. It's like undescribable because you work so hard to get like a title because it's not something that you can just get overnight. You have to earn the respect, earn, you know, people knowing that you'll be a good champion, knowing that you put on good matches, have good psychology, good storytelling, everything like that. So knowing mm-hmm. that, like, the company puts all of that stress and faith in you is really great. And just winning it, it wasn't winning it to me. It was more of, like, the next match I had with the belt. Like, hearing them say, like, the woman's champion, like, it's like, Ask them where my belt's at. I get to put my belt. I get to go out with the belt. That's when it really sunk in. That like, oh crap! I'm like the poster girl of this company. It's crazy. It's it's always it's always after the fact. Like the day I the day I get to go out and defend it is when it really hits in. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it's great, but it's also a lot of work because like, I can't drop it. I'm very clumsy. I'm a very very clumsy person. So my fear is, like, I'm going to walk out, I'm going to trip and fall, or, like, I'm going to drop the title while I'm walking out doing something. It's always nerve-wracking because it's, like, I don't want anyone to see my flaws. <laughs> now, have you ever uh, accidentally, like, left the title? I have not. And I'm and I'm super scared that there's going to be a day that that happens. But I so far I have not left. I've walked out of the house with it. But I remember to go back and get it. But I've never fully left my towel at home. I left without it at a venue, and the promoter had it. So okay. I've done that, but I've never left it at home. Well, that's good. I've uh, oh, I can share some stories. And I'm, like I said, I've never wrestled, but I've done you know social media backstage, and <laughs> let's just say I've known some wrestlers who were supposed to drop the title, so they purposely left it at home. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't go back. I would just like delete all my. So I would go ghost. Delete all my social media. Like delete my phone number. <laughs> go live in a box with my title. 
Well, just you know, sometimes when people been uh, what they call vets, and they feel like entitlement. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I never pull the vet card. I feel like if you're, I've always heard this saying: it's like if you're the best in the room, find a new room. Mm-hmm. You should never be the best in the room. So that's kind of like how I feel. So like, but I also hate being a newbie. So I'm like very back and forth with that because I hate being the new kid in the room because it's like if I if I look at someone this way I may get punched or like if I drop something I'm gonna get blacklisted but then if I go to a place I know I'm like accepted at I could just sit and not do anything and it's like why am I not doing anything I should be doing something yeah now have you ever um do you at least try to like make sure you know at least a couple people before like do you try to get to meet people if you're going to a new show a new town like try to get to know the person before you go in there? Not really. I okay. I've heard that I have a very outgoing, loud personality. So I feel like I just there's a lot of people that I would say wouldn't like me at first because I'm so in your face, I guess is the way like I'm not in your face, but I'm very you know, like when you hear me you're like, Oh that's camera, like she's here. So I think a lot of like introverted people were very back offish towards me. But, no, when I went to Evolve the first time with Shotzi, I kind of just, I gravitate towards the guys more because I grew up with a lot more men. So getting close to the females is a little hard for me. And wrestling is a little bit easier now. But, like, going into the Evolve locker room with, like, Shotzi and Mercedes Martinez and Brandy Lauren and Ariel, it was so intimidating. I literally, I'm not even kidding you, I sat in a corner. I found a corner. And I sat in it, didn't say anything, so I taking my shoes off. And, like, Brandy Lauren was the first person that said anything to me. She walked up and sat down in front of me. So I looked up. She looks at me. She goes, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. She's like, you just look kind of sad over here in the corner. I was like, I'm just new here. She's like, we well, can come talk to us. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, it was, like, it was, like, that freshman going to, like, a senior party type of thing. We just, like, don't want to say anything, don't want to funny device to excuse me, excuse me, I'll go put my head down in this corner. <laughs> but they were really sweet to me, all the girls were. I got really close to a lot of them. I got close to a lot of the guys as well. So it's just, it's so much fun going there now. Well, that's good. You know, you should really take the attitude anywhere you go. Um, be yourself and uh, just, you know, I'm an extrovert also. I've learned that, and, you know, I'm always told, you never meet a stranger. Like, you always know people. It's not all the time. It's just that I, I'm, you know, part of the reason why I'm a journalist because I'm naturally nosy. So <laughs> I like to know people's stories. So, you know, just right. never change. Yeah. All right. So it's so before we, get, before we get out of here and let you go train and continue to become a better, even better wrestler, I'm going to do <laughs> a few rapid fire questions. Oh no! Oh my gosh, no! <laughs> These are so hard. It's like family I'm, feud. It makes me like makes me sweat. <laughs> I promise you, they're painless. <laughs> you, you ready? I start asking. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? Okay, I am fifty percent ready. <laughs> okay, favorite wrestler of all time, and it could be man or uh, woman. Um, Triple H. All right, favorite era of wrestling? Uh, 2006 to 2010. Okay. WrestleMania or Wrestle Kingdom? WrestleMania. All right, so what's your dream WrestleMania match? Oh, um, um, I would say Adam Cole and AJ Styles. Or, or... Ooh. Triple a redo of like Triple H and Edge. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So these are gonna be uh, either or, and you gotta pick one. You ready? Oh. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? This is horrible. I can hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Flair Hogan. Uh, um. Uh. <laughs> This is okay. Um, Flair. Okay. Brett or Sean? Oh my gosh. Um, 
my goodness. Did you just, like, try to make me want to cry? <laughs> yeah. Brett. No, Sean. No, both. Neither. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm like blacklisted. No, you uh, won't. Yes, I will. <laughs> Uh, let's. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Oh, so I'm gonna go Brett. All right, Rock or Austin? Rock. All right, Cena or Orton? Orton, all the way. All right, Trish or Lita? Lita. AJ or Paige? I love both. <laughs> um, I. I would say AJ because I feel like I relate more to her because she's just on her, in her own little world. And I think oh. it's adorable. Okay. Charlotte. But quote oh. me on that. They're, I love them both. <laughs> it's okay. You you can love both. <laughs> Charlotte or Becky? Charlotte. Sasha or Bailey? Uh, um... Bailey. All right. Rhonda or Shayna? Shayna. And oh, last, Shana. <laughs> last but certainly not least, <laughs> Naomi or Bianca Belair? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why do you do this? Um, how about let's just say I won't pick this and then we'll leave it for the fans to decide. Okay, I'll give you that one. Okay. <laughs> only, be, only because it's Black History Month. <laughs> and I can't because they are like, they are queens, both of them. Like, I, anytime that they're on, it's to the point now where if I don't have time to watch SmackDown, I will fast forward and see Naomi and pause it and rewind it just to see her segment. Oh, man. Have, have you ever and I been, just love Bianca. Have you been to a WrestleMania yet? I have not, so I'm going to evolve for mm-hmm. WrestleMania weekend this year. So I oh, won't nice. be at Mania, but I'll be in that like general area. So I'm gonna kind of see how that goes and yeah. what happens with that. Well, if you can, I would definitely advise getting tickets uh, and go as a fan. Just enjoy it, take it in. I, every wrestler fan, in my opinion, needs to have that opportunity to be able to say they attended WrestleMania. When I when I tell you, I went to WrestleMania 28, my first one, and, I mean, the experience was incredible. And in 33, I shed a tear when Naomi won the championship. Oh, that was so, great. So, yeah, definitely. I, uh, I, it's, like, weird because, for me, I don't, which this, may, this is going to sound very strange, I don't want to go to WrestleMania because I feel like, I want this so bad that it would be way more special to me is to experience WrestleMania as a talent. Like my first okay. WrestleMania was my first ever one I was in. Or like the first ever one I got to go to being signed to, you know, the company. I understand, you know. <laughs> I could definitely understand that. It's funny because I think back to WrestleMania 33 and being down there, and this is like at the height of me working at WSU and a lot of the talent, was there as fans. Like, I mean, um, no, nah, me and Yim didn't go. Leva Bates was there, or, or is now she is the librarian. Um, Adam Cole and Britt Baker were both there. This is when they, like, first started dating. Faye Jackson was there. And so it was just, like, really cool, like, you know, all of us being, you know, at that show. So. Yeah, but, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, so, um. Any uh, final thoughts you want to leave the fans with? Let them know where to find you. So, I last time I told you I was on like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of this stuff. I am so my Twitter is linked to my Instagram. So, if fans want to message me or get in contact with me, I would say between Facebook and Instagram. I am not good at Twitter. I wish I was better. I don't know how to work it. I don't know how to tweet. I don't know how to do a hashtag. So I'm sorry for all the fans who do follow me on Twitter. I will get better, I promise. Um, but to follow me I, on all my social media, it's Cameron underscore Brene, C-A-M-R-O-N underscore B-R-A-N-A-E. 
and that's for my Instagram and I think my Twitter as well, but also my Facebook. So Ooh. just look me up. And then I have an athlete page as well, which is the account I add most fans on, which is just Brene. So it's just B-R-A-N-A-E. And that's where you'll see upcoming shows, promos, um, pictures, just where I've been, everything like that. Well, cool, Cameron. I definitely appreciate you coming on, getting the opportunity to be on this episode of Wrestling for the Culture. Um, you know, um, keep keep pushing, keep grinding, and I definitely can't wait to see you on TV every week. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing! I'm if I do win, always say win, guys. Don't say if win. I'm in that state. But when I do, we have to have another interview because it's gonna be crazy. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be wild. (laughs) Yeah, I can't wait. Well, take care. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Cameron Brene. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast by simply going to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you name it, we are there. And of course, make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel by simply hitting the button. Make sure you do that and you will not miss a notification. Also, if you like this podcast, be sure to give me a five-star rating. Till next time, folks, I'm Brian H. Waters. So long, everybody.